Belkowitz, President and CEO of Intelligent Concrete. I'm David Harris. I'm the Principal Engineer for Intelligent Concrete. And today we are talking about ASTM C494. Um, this video we're going to be looking at just kind of what it is, going into a bit of an overview of what the standard is. Right, we'll just fly is. by. Right, yeah. I'll fly by. I'll fly. I'll fly. I'll fly. I'll fly. I'll fly. So we're, we're doing trees this week, and I am inclined to say the Bradford pear. That is my mother in law's most favorite tree. It's a lovely tree. Did we, did we, we planted, planted one in their front yard about, what, seven years ago? Sammy was a baby. Ding, ding, Bradford pear. And, um,. Yeah, it's a beautiful tree. John did all this research before he planted it. Found out the depth. Like, it's it's kind of involved. You don't just plop a tree in the ground. Yep. It has to be a certain depth. Yes. It has to prepare the soil. Correct. All those things. Anyways, that's a large tree tangent here. Let's get back to, <laughs> Let's get back to 494. Get back to 494, the topic at hand. So, um, what is it, David? Well, ASTM C94 is an ASTM specification for myself. I have to look these up when I go to use them because they're pretty specific. Yeah, they are. And they're pretty exact. Let me read you the title for this one. It's the Standard Specification for Chemical Admixtures for Concrete. So being that, it has a, a couple major different phases in it. Right. Oh, absolutely. So the initial phase is doing an evaluation on just the product itself. Right. So, and there's different tests. We're not going to start rattling those off. You can get the standard, all kinds of, what, 20 pages of, and, and we'll cover 10 that in, pages of wonderful information. We'll cover that in detail as we go. Sure, sure. And then the other phase comes over to my desk is, is the stress strain phase. It's testing the, right. the concrete itself, its strength over time, some various different properties, compression, pressure. Again, we'll cover so these. Much in, flex. In, in, <laughs> so much So many flex beams. It's not right. We'll cover that. So many flex beams. We, we will cover it. Uh, briefly to to extensively uh, later on so but the key is the the two major categories testing the material itself right and testing how the material works works in concrete yes and there are very specific tests set up set up for that to evaluate kind of chemical and physical components of the actual admixture and then the performance in the concrete based on just a, a pretty extensive list of tests but you're trying to evaluate just a lot of different characteristics and get an idea of kind of upfront strength versus, you know, extended strength, durability, even free slot testing. Like it really is pretty extensive. Yeah, and, and that leads on to the question about, I mean, we care because we're material scientists. Right. We help people develop products. We're engineers, we care about stress and strain and strength. Right. So here in the lab, we care a lot about these things. Does anybody else care? Oh, absolutely. I mean, this really is a way, I think, for DOTs, for government agencies, and honestly, even for private industry, to evaluate the effectiveness of a specific material. Because so much testing has already been done, and it's not the be-all, end-all. I mean, there can be other special performance aspects or different things that need to be looked at later on. But it really is giving you like a pretty good idea of how it's going to perform. Perform. I mean, you're doing strength tests at one day all the way out to a year. So you're seeing those early benefits or maybe not benefits, maybe it's the opposite. Right. Um, but you're making sure that that's maintaining all the way out. And that's huge too, because some, you'll get an increase in strength in the beginning, but then you get to a year and you have a drop and you need to know that. Right, so, so structural engineers, design engineers, they want the strength properties right. and whatnot. The DOTs, they do pay, but they pretty much want the flex. So if you look in a typical DOT, um, standard specifications for road and bridge, or that type of thing, or you go to visit a DOT office and go to visit a DOT official, imagine they look through the little peephole in the door and you have to hold up the 494 right. to get in. Uh, because if, if you don't have that, they're not. They're basically not going to talk to you. That's required in their specification. So, and they may not even look at it that extensively. As long as you met the criteria, as long as you passed. Right. I mean, that's a huge. That that's your ticket. You know what I mean? That's your much, ticket to the party. That's pretty much right. I mean, that's. So. Um, it is the it is the proof of the pudding. Right. It is the certification of greatness. Um, all those things, and so. Right. Many people require it, and even people that may not actually require it 
like to see it. Oh, sure. Again, what? it's just it's a pretty straightforward and comprehensive overview of how the product performs. And that, that's a key. That's that's a good summary. So that's what 494 is, and uh, we're going to get into it in yeah almost excruciating detail. Right. Oh, <laughs> I know. As we go forward. Yes. Anyways, thank you so much for joining. More stuff to come. Go ahead and like, subscribe, ding that bell. Go concrete. And beat asphalt. There you go. <laughs> there dude. you that go. Was great. Thank you.